Hello, friends, and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. All right, so we're going to pick up where we left off yesterday by uh, finishing off that drawer. I also took a couple more trips over to the storage locker today just to get rid of some extra stuff. So this place is starting to become actually livable now. Uh, you can actually move around here without tripping over things. So that's an improvement. So let's get back to the drawer and start talking about that. So we let that thing sit overnight with the clamps on. And that glue is really well set now, so I probably wouldn't even have to do nails if I didn't want to. But you know what? We're going to do them anyway. So the big issue right now is we got to deal with this mess. Now, normally what I would do is I'd bring out bring out my uh, flush cut router and just route off that thing uh, real easy. It'd take that all of five seconds to do it. But unfortunately. Um, the router is in one of the pods uh, and I don't have that right now. So we're going to do things the old-fashioned way. We're going to use a planer. Yep, that's right. We're going to use a planer. So the planer is actually a really simple piece of device. There's a, just the flat piece here on the bottom. There's a blade that kind of sticks through this gap that you see in the bottom here. And it just sticks out ever so slightly. And it's clamped into place, so there's, it just literally just shaves the uh, the wood off real nice. So what you do is once you get it all together, you just kind of rub it along the edge, push on it, and you smooth it off. And ultimately what it does is it just literally smooths everything, makes it nice and flush. Now in this case, I'm not really that experienced using the planer because I usually pull out my router to do that. It's a lot quicker and a lot easier. So I ended up peeling a little bit of the laminate off of the the face place but that doesn't matter because we're going to be uh putting the uh the face of the cabinet on top of that anyway so right now it's nice and flush looking and it isn't sticking up and so it isn't going to rock around a lot which is going to hopefully make this look better so let's put the face plate back on so once i get everything back to uh, back assembled it actually looks all right now i have decided that here i want to do a little something more because there, there isn't really much glue holding on to that corner there. So I think I want to get just a little piece of wood that I can put in there and glue onto that side, glue onto that side, and screw it in real well so that we'll provide a little bit more support right now. Right now, that's the weak part. But other than that, I think this is ready to go. Just got to put the sliders back on and uh, put it back in. Now, ideally at this stage, I should... Uh, Go out and buy the proper length rails because the length of the rails should be the should have the the length of the drawer. Right now, in, a, in order to do this, this drawer is not only going to pull out about that far, which means about this much of the drawer is going to be hidden inside the cabinet. You'll have to kind of reach in to grab into that, you know. But I'm not going to spend any money on this. This isn't my problem. I'm just going to try and make it make it at least so it doesn't fall apart in your hands. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a couple of holes here where I want to put the new screws in. You have to keep track of these because there's a left one and a right one. They're usually marked. I don't know if you can see that, but right there it says DL, which is drawer left. So, and you always want to push it right up to the front end there when you make your holes. So that everything's lined up because this little, this little wheel back here acts like the stopper, and if one stopper is here, you know, if the stoppers aren't lined up, it's going to hit the first stopper, and that's as far as it's going to go. So you want to have them both lined up on both sides of the drawers so that they're stopped at the same point. So I've used my handy-dandy caliper to figure out what the right size of the screws are, and I've, I've selected the appropriate size drill bit. And so now all I'm just going to do is just drill the holes which I marked a minute ago.
do is attach the, uh, the rails and drive the screws. I'm just going to actually use a hand screwdriver just because uh, the holes are already driven. So it makes it a little bit easier to do it this way. Drive it down tight. But remember, this is MDF, so it's not the strongest stuff in the world. So you don't want to drive it in too tight, or you'll just strip the screw. With, you'll strip out the wood in there. And then we'll do the same thing over here. And here. Like I said, being careful not to go too deep on that because you will very easily strip the wood out of the, the MDF. All right, so all you're gonna do now is just pop it back in. And of course, open the range again because you can't do it without the range being open. Set the wheels over the top of the slider, and we are in business. Hey, it's at least as good as it was, right? Opens up, closes. Like I said, because uh, the right, the slider is so short, it doesn't open up all the way. So you just have to deal with that. But you know what? It's usable now. And you just got to reach way under there to do it, unless you want to go and spend the time put some more sliders on there. Now I know a lot of you commented that there seemed like it was a really elaborate process to do this. Unfortunately, most of the hard work came from the fact that I had to fix up what they'd done wrong the first time. If I'd actually just gotten the stuff from in a box and, in, and assembled it myself, it probably would have taken less than half the time to do that. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's so much easier to do it right the first time than to have to go back and do it over and over again. It just, it baffles me that this is even a problem. Starting to find some stuff in the boxes that I can use to decorate the house. I thought this was appropriate for the stairwell. Not necessarily because it's dangerous because it's the Winchester Mystery House, but just because we actually know what's under those stairs. So you remember a couple weeks ago when we did our first episode of That's Not How It's Done. I pointed out this lovely patch job here that they did in my closet with the amazing electrical work and pointed out how that was caulking compound that they filled in over there. And that one especially bugs me because that's just, it's ugly looking and you know, it's just a reminder that they don't really know what's going on here. One of the things I pulled out of the pod the other day that actually might help me on this is my all purpose joint compound. Yay, that's what you do to fix a, that's how you fix walls if you're gonna do it right. I'm halfway thinking just because this thing's bugging me so much, I may just pop that thing out of there and fix that because that's so easy to do right. In the comments section of yesterday's video, somebody noted that this looked like it was a river, very nice piece of a kitchen counter that I had on the top of my workbench. Good call, my friend. This was from the counter in my old house. This is the piece that they cut out for the kitchen sink. Uh, I don't know if you remember the counter that much, but it was a big, very long piece of something. And so if they cut the hole out before they put the counter in place, it would snap in half when they were installing it. So what they do is install it in one piece, and then they cut the hole out for the sink. They let me keep the piece, and I just put it on my tool bench because... Uh, it's, you know, it's a nice solid surface. It's very, very flat. It's very, very hard. And it's done a good job for, you know, 10 or 15 years. All right, so that's the end of this video. Thank you as always for watching and I'll see you tomorrow on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.